One of the most common questions that I get about being a goldsmith is, how did you get into that line of work? So this video, I'm gonna be covering two things. The first is how exactly I personally got into goldsmithing. And the second is going to be uh, my advice for anyone who is interested in pursuing a career in goldsmithing. So there are certainly many paths to becoming a goldsmith. There's not just one right way, but I would say there is one way to rule them all. You take a journey through Mordor. <laughs> The way that I got into goldsmithing was back in 2001, I was just a young spring chicken and I got a call from an extended family member and he's a goldsmith and he asked me, um, hey Jordan, would you like to come work for me as a polisher? So after three years of working as a polisher, I graduated high school and I moved away. I took a hiatus. A couple years later, I was out living with my friends in a college town, going to school part-time, sort of living the dream, if you will. And my family member reached back out to me and said, hey, how would you feel about working for me full time as an apprentice? I'll never forget, I was riding in the car with my brother, kind of like going through the pros and cons. And I specifically remember him saying, he's handing you this um, career on a silver platter. You have to take it. <laughs> you know, he was totally right. I was able to start learning more of the actual trade of goldsmithing, how to size a ring, how to tighten a stone, how to straighten prongs, how to solder rings together, how to do chain repairs. After doing that apprenticeship for a while, I um, decided to move back to where my friends were because I'm like in my early 20s at this point and I, f I was feeling like I was missing out on life, you know, kind of naively thinking that. Um, so I moved back and I was eventually able to land another apprenticeship. So I guess the whole apprenticeship years is what I would call them was about four to five years. So in total, I was able to apprentice under three different master goldsmiths. It was truly an invaluable experience to be able to learn from them one-on-one. -on -one. And eventually the time came where I had all the skills necessary to go out on my own. So from 2012 to 2016, I was starting my own business doing primarily jewelry repair for large corporations. Around 2016, I officially changed my name to Modern Goldsmith and I decided that I wanted to take on the more artistic side of goldsmithing, which was more custom work. I really started to get more satisfaction out of not doing the um, routine sizings day in and day out, rather building something from scratch, working more with people to create like engagement rings or custom jewelry that was sentimental. So yeah, now I'm happy to report that it is, I'm going into year eight of being my own boss, being a goldsmith and working for people all over the world doing custom jewelry. And honestly, I love my job. So now I'm gonna cover the second part of the video, which is talking about how someone can get into goldsmithing. I always um, tell people it's a good idea to get your feet wet a little bit. Goldsmithing equipment is very expensive. Um, to set up a bench, it requires room to do that. So the best thing you can possibly do to kind of feel it out is to take a class if one is available to you. I actually took a jewelry making class at a college. It wasn't like the best of the best as far as materials are concerned, but you're able to do casting. You have your own little workbench and there's an instructor there that knows a lot about, you know, jewelry making. Um, taking a class is a really good option. And if you're willing to travel, there's actually a lot of different bench classes, or I guess bench jeweler classes all around the country in the United States, at least in other parts of the world. And it can be either like a week long course where you can kind of just feel it out or you can, you know, do something a little bit longer, maybe like a, a three month course, like during a summer. And there's also um, actual jewelry schools that you can go to. So you know, learn as much as you can on someone else's equipment is my first um, piece of advice I would give. Um, one of the apprenticeships I got was actually just showing up unannounced to a jewelry store and just expressing my desire to um, work for this individual. And if you just kind of show these goldsmiths that you are eager to learn and that you are ready to work, a lot of times um, these people have a need for help. So you can at least kind of get in, um, get your foot in the door, kind of like I did um, with being a polisher and you can just learn from there. Be willing to make sacrifices. I moved around a bunch for these jewelry jobs. I was able to sacrifice, you know, some of my time with my friends to go work on, you know, learning the skills necessary to make this my career. And it certainly wasn't easy at the time, but looking back now, it's obviously like one of the best decisions I made was to 
be willing to travel somewhere. Another thing you might have to be willing to do is to work in less ideal <laughs> situations. Just try to find any opportunity. One of my first jewelry jobs, um, I ended up getting paid like diddly squat. It was like $5 and something an hour, and it was just absolutely atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was just happy to be there and I thought well if I'm not gonna be getting paid well as far as like um, monetary payment I'm going to ask this person as many questions as I can and to try to get my uh, my hands-on experience on as many pieces of jewelry as I can so that way I'm like kind of making up for it and skill because the more skill you have the more desirable you are to potential employers and the more money you can make the last piece of advice I would give is to just be patient when it comes to finding a jewelry position. Um, it can be quite discouraging to be asking around for a jewelry job and no one's taking you in, I guess. However, patience is very key and persistence. There was one opportunity I had. It literally took me a whole year to get the position and <laughs> that was at a, a company called Jared's, the gallery of jewelry. It can only be Jared, you know. <laughs> so they had an apprenticeship position at Jared's and I had gone in there and there was four goldsmiths that were working in this huge shop and I was just looking through the glass window and saying how awesome it would be to work there and the manager he was a super nice guy um, he said man I really wish I could hire you but we only have you know four goldsmiths working here you know once a position opens up I'll be sure to let you know and I just kept going back, honestly, and I hated it. I seriously hated it because I hate being intrusive. It was so hard to just sit there in the parking lot in my car, kind of building up my my courage to, to go walk back into the jewelry store. And I wasn't doing it like every week, um, but I was probably checking in every, you know, every other month. Each time I would just kind of say hi. I also ended up writing a cover letter that explained why I'd be good for the position. And it literally took a whole year. It was like a few days before Christmas and I get this call early morning saying a position had opened up and there was actually a lot of other people that had wanted to jump on that position but because I was so persistent over that full year the the manager just felt like I was the best candidate for the job and it totally paid off <laughs> and I was so it's so rewarding that's the the advice I would give is to be patient and persistent and if you do have a true desire to do this as a, as a career, there will be an opportunity for you. You can find a way to do it. It might require travel. It might require, you know, a little bit of uh, monetary investment, but there's always a way to learn a trade if you are willing to put forth the effort. I'm always here if you have any questions at all about becoming a goldsmith and someday, hopefully, I can bring some of these people into my shop, which will be a little bit bigger <laughs> than this and uh, we can make some custom jewelry. Until then, I'm Jordan, this is Modern Goldsmith, and I'll see you in the next video.